I want to produce a series of videos to help you study the Bible. Pastors are always telling their congregations, you need to study the Bible. You need to spend time in God's Word. You need to apply it to your life and know it so that it shapes the way you see the world. But let's face it, the Bible is a big, confusing, complicated book. It's full of stories and teachings and poetry and proverbs and even those really weird parts like the list of names in, say, Genesis 5 or Matthew 1 or the list of laws that slam us by the time we get to the second half of Exodus or in the book of Leviticus. Well, what do we do with those parts? How do we benefit from it? Many people approach the Bible devotionally, and, and just to be clear, the videos are meant to help you study the Bible. I'm not saying that these should become your devotional life. I think there's other elements that I would advise you to add to that. But at the heart of a rich Christian life is Bible study. It is knowing the Bible. I take my first task as a Christian pastor to be teaching the Bible. That is primary objective for me. I am a Bible teacher. So I thought what might be helpful for you is to produce some videos that show you my sermon process in a modified version that anybody, even if they're just beginning to read the Bible, if it's their very first experience with it, can use with some profit. They can learn about the Bible. So it's Monday morning right now. My sermon prep begins on Monday morning. I preached yesterday. Monday morning, day one, where do we start? Well, we start with the text. We start with God's Word. I don't search the Scripture blindly, but I start with where I've left off. I start in the very next verse. So day one, we start with the text. Let me walk you through that step. Many people are taught a fortune cookie approach to the Bible. That is, it's a series of unrelated verses that need to be pulled out when you're ready. And many people approach the Bible on a needs basis. And there's, ne there's not necessarily anything wrong with this approach, but many people open the Bible looking for an answer to a specific need that day. I want to advise a little bit different approach. I think the Christian needs to move through the Bible systematically, or at least in some systematic fashion. So my personal practice as a pastor is primarily to preach through books of the Bible. Currently, I'm completing a series in Mark that's taken us almost a year, and we're in Mark chapter 15. I've just preached Mark 15, 1 through 32 over the weekend. So on Monday morning, I don't come in searching for a text to preach for that week, not typically anyway, but I come in knowing where I have to start. And today, that is Mark chapter 15, beginning in verse 33. So the very first thing I do is, of course, pray and ask for God's guidance. And I don't want to, want to minimize any of those steps when it comes to Bible study. If this is God's Word and the Father and the Son and the Spirit's missions to us are being revealed herein, then we want to be aware that we cannot study the Bible in our own power, no matter how clever or intelligent we are. Yet there are some principles and there are some faculties that the Holy God has given us to pay attention to Scripture. And so we use those to the best of our ability. So Mark chapter 15, verse 33, where do we begin with Bible study? Well, we begin by reading and rereading and rereading and doing so slowly and attentively. So let me just show you the pace at which we want to read. I use the English Standard Version when I preach. It's sort of a church-wide uh, Bible that we use, but most modern translations are excellent. The NIV is very good. The New Living Translation is very good. And they all have their strengths and weaknesses. So pick up the Bible you're comfortable with and begin in Mark 15, reading slowly, verse 33, and when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. You want to read at a pace that is almost meditative, that allows you to hear each word 
and to ponder them and to pause over them. And so I'll read the entire text. And this week, the text that will be preached is verses 33 through 47. I break that as a unit. There are practical considerations and all sorts of other factors that play into that. But that's a nice natural end for us this week as it ends chapter 15. So I read slowly. That's step number one, to read and listen to the Word of God. Then what comes next? Well, what comes next is I have a journal where each week I begin by writing notes out. Now, these aren't notes for sermons just yet. What I write initially are observations. I want to note things that are interesting or important in the text. And so I would note immediately here in verse 33, that was the sixth hour, and this darkness lasted until the ninth hour. And I might make a note to look into what is the significance of darkness. And in fact, there is great significance over the whole story of Scripture when it comes to this darkness, uh, this darkness theme that we're seeing here in Mark 15:33. And then in verse 34, we have at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. And then we have some Aramaic words, Eloi, Eloi, lama sambachthani. And this is a quote from the Old Testament. Your Bible will do this different ways. Sometimes it will put it in italics. Uh, sometimes it, it will put it in bold. There are various ways to do this, but, but you want to take note here. Any Bible with a reference will point out that this is a quote from Psalm 22. So you want to make note of that too. And at some point, you want to read all of Psalm 22 to see what it's about. And so you go through the entire text making notes. And then there's this note about calling Elijah. Why is that significant? I might even write it as a question. Why is that significant? What you're doing here is learning to observe, learning to pay attention, learning to see each word and see each detail in the text. One of the great dangers in Bible reading is too quickly reading our own world into the Bible. We want to put our own needs there, and what happens is we end up missing really obvious features of the text, and in a really bad case, we end up distorting the biblical text to say something entirely different from what it wants to say to us. So there's homework for day one. Begin by reading the text. Read the text closely and attentively. Make notes, observations, write down your questions. And then, only then, after we've done that, we can move on to the next part of attending to the text, which is trying to answer some of these questions, doing the actual study and probing to see what these things mean. Okay, so you've read the text and you've done so slowly and attentively. You've made a list of interesting features and observations. You've written down questions and things that you need to look into more. You've maybe read Psalm 22 at this point for the text this week. What's next? Well, on this first day, as you still attend to the text, now is the time to start answering some of those questions, to learning what the text means. The one indispensable tool for this, for the average person studying the Bible, is a good, thick, hefty study Bible. There are plenty of study Bibles on the market, and if you go to a Christian bookstore or to Amazon, you can find tons of them. Let me just make a few recommendations. The one I'm holding here is the ESV Study Bible. That is its name, the ESV Study Bible. This isn't just an ESV that has a study Bible to it. There are lots of study Bibles that use the ESV translation. This is the name, the ESV Study Bible. It, it is hard to beat this in terms of the scholars who contributed to this project. But there are others. There's the Reformation Study Bible, which is also very good. There's the Biblical Theology Study Bible, which has come out more recently and is in the NIV. That one is excellent as well. And then finally, you have the NIV Study Bible. That's another very good study Bible. Any of those four should give you exactly what you need in this step as you work through the text. 
If you really want to get into studying the Bible, it may be helpful to purchase a small commentary, like a one volume commentary on the whole Bible. The best one on the market for this is the new Bible commentary. It's gone through many editions. You can get a recent edition or you can do like I did and buy an older edition used and much cheaper on Amazon or somewhere like that. But any of those resources will help you as you try to answer these questions. Read the notes, read the commentary, and see what the best scholars are saying about the text as you untangle what it means. And then once you've finished with step one, once you have a sense of what it means, you may wish to write a few sentences summarizing, here's what the passage is about, here is what God intended to say, here's why this is in the Bible. And then, tomorrow, we will move into step number two, which is asking some of the theological questions. What does it say about God? What does it say about mankind? What does it say about the gospel of Jesus? What, what place does this have in the whole grand narrative of the biblical drama? Those are the questions we'll ask tomorrow. Today, we pay attention to the text.